This is Find Your Dream Job, the podcast that helps you get hired, have the career you want, and make a difference in life. I'm your host, Mac Pritchard. I'm also the founder of Max List. It's a job board in the Pacific Northwest that helps you find a fulfilling career. Every Wednesday, I talk to a different expert about the tools you need to get the work you want. Find Your Dream Job is brought to you by Top Resume. Top Resume has helped more than 400,000 professionals land more interviews and get hired faster. Get a free review of your resume today. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. You have a personal brand, whether you know it or not. And how you use it to present yourself to others can make a big difference in your job search. Michael Ramirez is here to talk about how to create and share your personal brand. He's a talent acquisition manager at the Oregon Health and Science University. It's a public research university where healing, teaching, and discovery come together. Michael joins us from Portland, Oregon. Well, let's start right here. Michael, what do you mean when you talk about someone's personal brand? Why don't you define that for us? Yeah, I I feel like before we define the personal brand, I would love to define brand itself. Um, And in the Cambridge Dictionary, it is defined as a type of product made by a particular company and sold under a particular name. So when you see brand, you see it every day in logos you wear, commercials, printed coffee cups. It's the ability to remember the company. So the way I define like a personal brand is the effort to communicate and present your value to the world. But in this particular focus, like we are presenting the effort of our values to the career you want. So the idea is to make your personal brand to help others remember you. And how does your personal brand, how does it matter when you look for work? Yeah, it matters is because when you see things nowadays, lots of it is through, you know, websites applying for jobs and all they see is a resume or your LinkedIn profile. What helps with personal brands is kind of three ways. It allows you to storytell who you are. And with many things, when you see like, you know, social media, there is a story behind every type of post, video, um, and, 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 audio things that you present. Another thing is individuality. Recruiters go through a lot of resumes, LinkedIn profiles, and personal brand can help you kind of elevate that type of um, persona that you're trying to identify and make you stick out. And finally, it gives you the confidence because with personal brand, you know who you are, you know your strengths, your your interests, and this is your ability to confidently say who you are and what you do. So your personal brand lets you tell your story, it defines your persona, and it helps you deliver uh, that story and and that persona with with confidence. Do you have to be, Michael, an expert writer or a digital marketer to, to successfully create and share your personal brand? Absolutely not. I think the first start in any type of personal branding is really just to know you who are and kind of dream and be creative. I think everyone in this world is creative in some sort of way. What personal brand does is help you communicate that through the different channels. And what stops job seekers from improving their personal brands? What are some common barriers you see when people are looking for work and they want to get that brand out there? Yeah, absolutely. I think the biggest thing is when they think of brand, you have to create a logo or do this type of focus group of who you are and such. And I think that's really overwhelming for like the individual. And it's really about just self-reflection and really understanding like what your really interests are. And once you understand that, you're able to create an identity that you're confident in saying and communicating that will allow other people to say like, oh, hey, this is this person that I know, and he does, he or she, or they do this, which allows them to remember them as they move forward with possibly a career or a connection or a network. You've got a three-part structure that you encourage people to, to use when creating and sharing a personal brand. Before we dive into that, I, I'm just curious, Michael, um, are there personal branding mistakes you see people make because they don't understand 
both the importance and how to create and share a personal brand. Uh, just r- rookie errors that we, we've all committed at, at different times. What are a couple that stand out? I think one of them that mainly stands out is doing too much at the same time. Keeping it simple and breaking down like a specific thing you want to work on and focusing on that will allow you to focus it and craft it so that it is not perfect, but at least it's a start. And once you're confident, again, going back to like, you know, how personal brand helps impact confidence, it allows you to move forward with other types of ways to communicate with yourself and ideas to to learn upon. Um, I think that's one main takeaway, I would say, is just focus on one thing. Another rookie mistake is having too many channels and too many different identities. Again, going back to sticking with one thing, it is way better just to think of one thing that you're confident in, whether that strengths your capabilities, and that will allow you to create that personal brand that you are confident in, in terms of telling to the world. So keep it simple. Uh, start with one channel and focus on on one identity. Don't try to be all things to all people. Well, let's let's go and just talk about that three part structure that you recommend job seekers follow when creating and sharing a personal brand. And your first step is to start with who you are. What do you mean by this, uh, Michael? Tell us more. Absolutely. So the first step is. In, in lay terms, discovery. So there is a famous uh, designer and educator, Debbie Millman, who does this class that she teaches where you take a blank piece of paper or a blank work doc and write your perfect day, what it looks like in five to 10 years. From that time, you wake up to the time you fall asleep. Where are you living? What do you work for? And what do you do after work? Doing this type of... Um, exercise will allow you to dream big and be creative. This will allow you to set a goal within your life and what you want to do in terms of work. And again, for this type of exercise, you'll be able to reiterate as you go, but it's a good starting point for you to really think of what it means to work and what your life is meaningful for. And Michael, how do you break that down in and apply to your job search. You, you've got this vision you've imagined or pictured rather this, this perfect day and, and the work you're doing as part of that. How do you apply that to your, the personal brand that's going to help you stand out from your competitors? Yeah, absolutely. So once you have your story that you like to, that you identify for, there's a really cool exercise that I do that takes like, you know, four different quadrants. Um, the first upper left quadrant would be what I like and what I'm bad at doing. The upper right quadrant would be what I like and I'm good at doing. The lower left quadrant is what I don't like and I'm bad at doing. And finally, the lower right quadrant is what I don't like and, and I'm good at doing. And you really want to use this visual board to really start crafting your brand in terms of your strengths and interests. Ideally, you want to you know focus on jobs or who you are in the upper right quadrant. Uh, but at the same time, you shouldn't you know not think about the first quadrant where you are still learning these skills but still like are interested in doing. So that's how you can start, you know, using what you have in these two exercises to really start coming with your brand of like who you are and what you're confident in. So how detailed is that quadrant? Are you putting, say, four to five bullets in each section? What what have you seen be effective? I think what you do for the first round is put as many things, ideas as you want but as you start, you know, revising and looking at it, what are the top five that you feel like you want to do in the next five to 10 years is how I would like kind of minimize it. So you do the two exercises, Michael. Uh, what do you do with this information uh, to get clear about your identity and strengths? Are you creating a one pager that you can uh, uh, reference when you're creating uh, job search documents? Yeah. So at this moment in time, it's basically, um, and this can go back, I might go move forward to like the second segment or structure, which is basically, um, you know, the plan and tracking or creating structure for your communication. Um, you, what the easiest way to do it is to create a spreadsheet. 
Okay. Let's pause there, Michael, because I want to take a break and I, I do want to move on to that second step uh, after the break. So stay with us when we return. Michael Ramirez will continue to share his advice on how to create and share your personal brand. How well does your resume tell your career story? Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. A professional writer at top resume will review your resume for free. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. Learn how to fix your resume yourself right away or hire top resume to do it for you. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. Now, let's get back to the show. We're back in the Maxlist studio. I'm talking with Michael Ramirez. He's a talent acquisition manager at the Oregon Health and Science University. It's a public research university where healing teaching, and discovery come together. Michael joins us from Portland, Oregon. Now, Michael, before the break, in that first segment, we were talking about how to create and share your personal brand. You've got a three-part structure. You encourage job seekers to follow to do this. And you took us through uh, part number one, and we were about to start on number two, and we had to take that break. So let's uh, pick it up there and you were talking, I, I was asking, what do you do with all this information, uh, the, the self-assessment? And you were talking about the value of setting up a structure for your communications. Tell us more about this second part and, and what you have in mind. Yeah. Um, to put it simply too, it's basically to plan and practice. So now that you've done the discovery, um, where people start to feel overwhelmed is where do I go from here? How do I communicate my story? And before we go into like the planning and practice, I definitely would recommend uh, looking, doing your pre-work and doing your LinkedIn profile. This LinkedIn is a great place for you to start your personal branding. Um, there are great videos out there on best practices to create a LinkedIn profile. So I definitely would recommend doing that prior to starting this um, this practice. So to simplify things, there's many ways to create a, a personal brand document and tracking it. Let's just start with just planning using a spreadsheet. So in this, you'll have different tabs, a, a tab of ideas on what to post. Um, basically, you're learning your project work and interesting articles and accomplishments. So you have a list of ideas to post within your LinkedIn profile. One other tab to have is your calendar. This will be your digital channel to communicate your story. And the best practice I would recommend is to start with one small post per week. And what I mean by that is out of that list in your previous tab of things that you want to post, post one thing out of that list so that it can help you start. And as you get more confident in posting about things you want to share within your LinkedIn network, you'll be able to do more. Another tab is to track your network. Basically, to uh, the basic breakdown for this is, you know, their contact information, where you met them, whether that's through LinkedIn, a career fair, et cetera, and additional ways to make sure you're touching base with them in a cadence. Again, there's many technologies out there to help you out with posting and connecting with organizations. Um, one of them is Trello, which is a good platform to do some sort of managing of everything. And there's an app called Later to help you schedule future posting so that you don't have to worry about posting a specific time or day. So I, I love that structure. And uh, it also goes back to a point that you made in the first segment, which was pick one channel and you recommended LinkedIn. Why do you recommend starting with LinkedIn when you're uh, paying attention to your personal brand and you're doing a job search, Michael? That's a great question. So with LinkedIn, it is the so far at this moment in time, the number one social media profile for jobs. Um, there's millions of people that use it to connect with, you know, looking for jobs or people that work in an organization that they would love to work for. So it's an all one place just to start professionally expanding your personal brand. And you recommended doing one article a week to in the beginning. Uh, how is that going to help promote and share your personal brand when you do that on LinkedIn? What 
kind of difference have you seen that kind of activity make? Absolutely. So first, it is posting to people that you're connected with. So these are people that you have met in some sort of way, whether that's career fairs, family, friends. So it's in within your circle. Um, what makes this really impactful is when people in your network see this, they may even share it in their LinkedIn posts. And those who are networking with other networkers will be able to see that and, you know, look into it and like, oh, hey, this is a person that has something interesting to say. Let me reach out to them or let me repost it. And then that kind of pyramid effect happens where your message is going across different people and folks that you may may not heard of, but is spreading the message of who you are. And when you're choosing the content that you're going to put in your calendar and, and share on LinkedIn, how do you recommend that people look for those articles and and connect it back to the self-assessment work that you did that we talked about in the first segment? Absolutely. So it comes down to like when you look at your quadrants, your upper right quadrants, things you're good at, things that you enjoy, um, there are ways and resources out there, blogs, websites, influencers, um, that you may use their their work to help you post on your space. At the same time, you can use their work and create your own thoughts. Um, what I like doing as well is if there's a specific project that you're working on and you see some other person kind of with a similar you can post about them saying like, hey, I worked on this specific project uh, and this person's doing the same thing. You can tag them and they can comment back and forth in regards to like, oh, this is awesome. So again, it's tapping into their network to see what your work has done. And I think that's a great way to start in terms of just communicating with people and connecting with people. Talk more about the benefits of doing that communication and with people, connecting with people. How is that helping you as a job seeker when uh, people that start seeing the articles that you've shared, the comments you're making on on LinkedIn? So what's interesting, um, statistically, when you look at jobs, it's 60% are referrals and 40% are cold resumes that people look into. So with these connections that you make, you are humanizing who you are as a person rather than just seeing a resume and seeing letters and words. What happens at that moment in time is that person that you're connecting with sees you as a person that may be a fit for this particular job that you know of or within their organization. So it gives you that referral aspect and that extra leverage to connect with people and apply for the job that you may be interested in just because you know someone else or you know that organization so well that you know people in that organization see what you've done in your LinkedIn profile and, and pique their interest in terms of, oh, we should look into this person and they should apply. You're a recruiter. You work for a large healthcare institution. You spend a lot of time on LinkedIn, Michael. I know that about you. What do you think as a recruiter when you're looking at someone's profile, they haven't posted in a year versus someone who is following the advice that you've outlined here. They uh, they they are contributing once a week or eventually maybe more. What difference does that make to you as a recruiter? It shows that they're confident in themselves with their work. It also shows me that they're interested in the space that they're looking into. So for example, if there is an RN that posts about neuroscience and you know eager to learn more, it makes me think like, okay, this is a good person to join our organization because they are passionate about it. You don't really see that when you don't post anything on your social media or you know communicate that. So how can we see that extra level of who you are if you don't share that? I think that's what makes people who do post about their interests, their accomplishments, um, how they stand out throughout the crowd when you looked at LinkedIn profiles. So there are three parts to your structure for how to create and share a personal brand. One is start with who you are, doing that self-assessment that we talked about. Number two is setting up this structure to to manage your communications. The third part is to prepare and practice your communications. Tell us more about this. Yeah. And to put it simply again, it's to innovate and iterate. Um, Many times you hear about elevator pitches. Um, these elevator pitches are a great way to 
start conversations um, and and connect with people. But to make it more impactful, you should craft your elevator pitch as if you're a storyteller. This makes it more personal instead of listening out your skills. Um, a great way to practice on your pitch is record yourself, um, share it with friends, um, g- you know, gain feedback from them to see what you can work on. Uh, with that, you can iterate your pitch and make it better as you use it in, you know, meeting with people in career fairs or in, in you know, one-on-one coffees. At the same time, with your postings, you can innovate this as well. For example, using your spreadsheet that you've created for yourself and the posts that you want to you want to you want to track, you can see. And LinkedIn does a great job of doing this to see how many people have looked at it or liked it, and you can see what makes people tick when it comes to your posts. So you track that out, see how you can iterate it, and make it better. There is no one stopping you from making things better in your personal brand as well as your life. How will you know, Michael, when the work you put into creating and sharing a personal brand is making a difference in your job search? Internally, again, going back to how it's impactful, once you feel confident in seeing those likes or feedback from your connections, that is one way to tell that you know you are making impact with them as well as yourself is the self-confidence and the feedback from others. Another way is, and this is hopeful is that recruiters start reaching out to you saying like, Hey, I love your post or I love your skill set that you've been posting. Can we have a conversation about an opportunity um, to get to know you more about who you are and what you do? Well, it's been a terrific conversation, Michael. Now tell us what's next for you. Yeah. Work-wise, OHSU is hiring. Uh, We are looking for folks out there who are passionate about helping others. Um, You can find opportunities at our website, ohsu.edu, under the Jobs tab, or find me on LinkedIn. Happy to help and make that connection. On the flip side of things, I'm actually starting my own podcast. Um, I'm diving deeper into what we talked about today. And, you know, the conversations I want to have is about identity and how we perceive it in our work and everyday life. Basically asking questions, how do I want to be seen, and how that makes me understand how I want to be seen both in work and life. Terrific. I I know that listeners can learn more about you by connecting with you on LinkedIn. And when they do reach out to you, uh, I hope they'll mention that they heard you on Find Your Dream Job. And congratulations on the the launch of that uh, podcast. That's That's terrific news, Michael. Now, given all the great advice you shared today, What's the one thing you want a listener to remember about how to create and share your personal brand? Don't be afraid to fail. Because with every failure or mistake that you make with starting your personal brand, you find the improvements you can make to make you more confident in how you communicate yourself. Make sure you never miss an episode of Find Your Dream Job. Subscribe to our free podcast newsletter. You'll get information about our guests and transcripts of every show. Go to maxlist.org slash newsletters. Again, that's maxlist.org slash newsletters. Next week, our guest will be Hayden Iverson Todd. She's an assistant director of career and fellowship advising at Reed College. It's a private liberal arts school in Portland, Oregon. Do you let the openings you see on job boards drive how you look for work? Step away from the computer, says Hayden. A better approach is to know your purpose and your strengths and reach out to your community. You'll not only find more opportunities, she says, but when you do see an online posting, you'll be in a better position to apply. Join us next Wednesday when Hayden Iverson Todd and I talk about how to do an intentional job search. Until next time, thanks for letting us help you find your dream job. This show is produced by Max List. Susan Thornton Hoff schedules our guests and writes our newsletter. Lisa Kislin Barry Anderson manages our social media. Our sound engineer is Matt Fiorillo. Ryan Morrison at Podfly Productions edits the show. Dawn Mole creates our transcripts, and our music is by Freddie Trujillo. 
This is Mac Pritchard. See you next week.